Hello, I'm back. All right, so let's take a look at Taurus season. Um, Taurus season, what can we say about Taurus season? Well, let's do the thing, or I'll do, I'll do, I'll do the thing where I look at um, which part of uh, life it, you know, you have Taurus, because everybody has Taurus somewhere in their chart, right? Um, and then we'll look at the energies. Um, it's kind of dynamic. Um, but I, I must say, you know, it's, it's strange because um, I don't know if it's because I, uh, I just have, um, I'm just speaking about personal stuff. If you skip ahead, I get it. But I don't know if it's just because I have Aries in the 12th house, which is hidden and self-sabotage, you know, and if I, you know, when I looked at the chart, right, here's, the, ooh, there we go. Here's the chart. So we've got all this stuff happening. We've got, oh, we've got, uh, what is this? Venus and Mar uh, Mercury, um, love and um, uh, thinking and the North Node, um, you know, where we're headed and then Chiron weaknesses. Um, all in Aries. Well, I have Aries in the 12th house, right? And 12th house is, can, is hidden, right? Um, or it could be self-sabotage or self-destructive behaviors or mental health and things like that. I already have Chiron in the 12th house. I'm in my year of my Chiron return. Um, and, you know, I, man, and, and then I also have the sun there too. So my point being is that I was looking at this and I was thinking, oh my God, because there was a part of me that is just like, you know, um, just stay hidden, you know, don't, don't do anything. Right. Um, but no, why? Because I also, <laughs> I also have at least, um, uh, yeah, I have, I have a strong Taurus, I have a Taurus moon, at least I believe, I believe I have a Taurus moon and a Taurus rising. Gets back to that, um, Taurus season thing. Taurus is fixed. Taurus is fixed, 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 fixed. I mean, it is fixed earth. I don't think you can get any more fixed than that. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's fixed air, there's fixed fire, there's fixed um, water. But if we have to look at anything out of the chart, Taurus is the fixed of the fixed. It's the, you know what they usually say? They say is Taurus is really stubborn. Sure. Okay, fine. Taurus can be stubborn, but uh, frankly, I think a lot of signs can be. I think Leo and Aquarius and Scorpio and even Virgo, really. Um, uh, Libra, I think a lot of them can. I think it, it also depends on your self-awareness, you know what I'm saying? But um, all right. So before I just ramble on more, I'll ramble on more later, I suppose. Um, but let's look at where this affects you. Um, and so, you know, I, I might, I don't know, because this is, it, it we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think whether or not I should include the Uranus Jupiter conjunction in this conversation or should I do a separate one? I might have to do it in this one. That would be easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, anyway. Um you guys know. You guys know it takes it, it takes a bit of work and extra time, you know, that kind of stuff uploading these things. So All right. So, let's talk uh timestamps timestamps are important right so we'll do timestamps as well um oh by the way if you can see back here 
I was playing with some uh, Lenormand. Are, are any of you playing with Lenormand recently? I just, this is just a side note. Um, I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking about, um, you know, like there's an event coming up tonight and then also tomorrow in my local area that has to do with like tarot readers and psychics and that type of stuff. And I was like, should I go? Should I not go? I don't know. I don't know. And, um, you know, you pull cards and, um, but there's, there's this technique and it's, it's talks about, uh, like, um, basically it's where you, and again, it's, it's Kelly at Truth and Story. Um, and, um, maybe I should link the video. Should I link the video? Eh. I don't know. That's extra work. But um, let me know if you're interested in knowing which video it is. But she she basically says that, um, you know, you can use tarot, but tarot can be kind of vague, right? And then when you look at Lenormand, it can be a little bit more specific. But then you look at playing cards and playing cards can be... Um, and the, the system that she uses, which I think is really easy to remember, is that, um, you know, red or hearts, hearts and diamonds, hearts and diamonds, or um, if we were looking at tarot, that would be cups and um, pentacles, right? Just think about the one, like the, the suit that, um, this is so off topic. <laughs> <laughs> but like the ones that end up in the happy ending, right? The happy ending of of the pentacles and the happy ending of the cups, right? That would be a yes. And then um, the swords and the uh, wands end up in kind of like a, a negative, stressful kind of ending. So that would be a no, basically. So, you know, but playing cards, you know, so red would be the, uh, the diamonds and the thing. Anyway beside the point. Let me know if you want the exact video and I can link it for you, but let me get back to the point. I just, I feel like I haven't talked in a while and so now I'm just talking. <laughs> All right, back to business. Back to business. So let's look at the signs and then we'll look at the energies for Taurus season. So for um, Aries, this is going to be be in your oh there we go where can we see can you see okay there you go so for Aries this is going to be in your um second house so second house of of self-worth um you need your resources which is your resources are what yourself your possessions your knowledge your your things, your, um, even the people in your life, those are, and things that, um, help you with your security and, um, uh, you know, having the things that you need, not like the extra things, but the, the things that are the simplicities type of stuff, right? Okay. And, um, Taurus, this is going to be Taurus season, right? So Taurus season, uh, this is going to be in your first house. So your first house of, you know, your personality, your your identity, um, how people, you know, how people see you, how people interact with you, how you present yourself, you know, to the world, that kind of thing. Um, and... Gemini, this is going to be in your 12th house. So your 12th house is the hidden stuff, um, hidden from other people, hidden from yourself, mental health, um, uh, sleep, rest, um, maybe even some self-sabotaging behaviors, that kind of thing. Um, and then for Cancer, this is going to be in your 11th house. So your 11th house, friends, um, groups, um, other people's interests, um, 
uh, hopes, wishes, um, you know, long distance, like goal planning, um, for the future, that kind of stuff. Um, and then Leo, this is going to be in your 10th house. So your 10th house has to do with what your, how people see you, um, overall, like on, on a public stage, right? What are you going to be known for? What's your status? What's your reputation? Um, your career, you know, that kind of thing. And Virgo, this is in your ninth house. So how do you connect with source, divinity, the divine, your, your philosophy of life, your, your global view of thing, your worldview, um, your higher learning, um, that includes college or, or long distance travel, that kind of stuff, learning about other cultures, that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, Libra, this is in your eighth house. So your eighth house has to do with shared resources, right? So shared resources of the money and things from your family or the banks or, um, businesses or, um, uh, you know, things, they can also be things that are hidden, taboo, uh, mysterious, like psychology or, um, things just that, you know, we have to dig in to find out because it's not on the surface. And, uh, Scorpio, this is going to be, sorry, this is in your seventh house. So your seventh house has to do with partnerships. So, you know, that, that really close person to you, whether that person is your personal, a personal relationship or a business relationship, um, just, you know, that significant other type of person, however that significant other person looks to you. And um, Sagittarius, this is in your... Sixth house. So sixth house has to do with um, serving, you know, serving uh, and health and job and pets and daily routine. So how do you take care of yourself? How do you take care of the animals and and the 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 work, the daily work that you have to do and and that type of thing. Um. Capricorn, this is in your fifth house, fifth house of fun and pleasure. And so all of those things, your hobbies, your interests, your dating, romance, um, things you find enjoyable, children maybe. So yeah. And um, Sorry, uh, Aquarius, this is in your third house. Sorry, your fourth house. This is in your fourth house of home, family, um, lineage, um, the land that you live on. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. Um, and then uh Pisces, this is in your third house. So your third house has to do with um thinking, learning, communication, um, you know, reading, writing, um, and also, oh, that reminds me, we're we're still in Mercury retrograde too. Um and uh I'm I'm gonna have to mention that later because not everybody's gonna look at the Pisces thing. Um but, you know, even like things, local things, interacting with your local community, your neighborhood, that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's look at the chart. There we go. Don't want to glare. All right. So, oh, let me just scoot over. All right. Sorry. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, I feel... I feel like I kind of want to hide, but you know, it, uh, the Taurus, the Taurus part of me says, no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep moving. <laughs> 
Taurus season. Um, anyway, what is Taurus season? In case you didn't see my introduction, my introduction, the Taurus season is fixed to the fixed. It's the earth of the earth. It's the fixed earth. I mean, you don't get any more fixed than earth, right? So it's, it doesn't change easily, even though we've got, uh, Uranus here, right? By the way, um, this Uranus, Jupiter, Uranus and Nancy, yeah. Uranus and Jupiter have been here for uh, like it, almost get, teaming up, you know, because they're, they're so close together. They've been like teaming up, which is a conjunction. They've been teaming up um, since like the middle of March. So, you know, there there's something here um, that we all are maybe if we're sensitive enough and i'm sure you guys who are listening are sensitive enough to know that there is something changing and it's positive right because jupiter is usually positive it can be it can be exaggeration it can be expansion too but in in any which way but i you know overall the general feeling is that this is a positive change because uranus is change in terms of um, money and and food and um, clo even clothes, home, anything that you know is basic basic needs, you know. So this isn't um, like you know on some level people could go well, you know this is this is like big big lucky lucky that kind of stuff. Sure, yes, it is lucky because, you know, um, in some level, we all are kind of struggling, struggling in in some sense um, uh, with, you know, food or home or, or money or something. But now the thing with Taurus is it, it says, um, let's just get real simple, you know, let's just get real natural, let's get basic, because Taurus is pretty basic, you know, and it doesn't want, Taurus doesn't want to complicate things, Taurus wants to keep things at home, you know, Taurus is a homebody, um, usually, um, and now granted for people who are listening, you got to look at your personal birth chart because your personal birth chart is going to change things, right? Because let's say, you know, I don't know. Let's say you have um, something like Saturn here in um, Taurus. Well, that's going to be... Um, you may say, well, I don't really want to... St you know, it's difficult because Saturn would make things difficult, right? I'm just rambling and going off topic so much. Anyway, beside the point, let me get back to the point. So the thing is, is that now the sun here just crosses over into Taurus. And I have this line up here to Pluto, and I have two degrees. Now, those that are familiar with numerology, two degrees is, is a big deal. Not to mention here that um, Pluto is so slow, right? It's slow to the point where it, it's going to take 20, about 20 years to, to move across this section. So for each degree, that's a big deal. And um, now, two, what, you know, the way I see two, um, it, 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 uh, you know, is, it's very intuitive. It's feminine. It, it's, um, it's receptive. And speaking of receptive, you know, like it just, it's funny how all of these things are in play right now. And because here's the thing, Taurus season is just a whole month, right? It goes all the way until like May 20th or something. So, but speaking of receptivity and femininity and, um, you know, those types of things and, and attracting things to us, you know, um, we have this Mars and Saturn here in Pisces. Now there is, I didn't put all the other lines here because it kind that we still have Black Moon Lilith here, but 
point being is, is if I put all these other lines, you would see it. You would see that there is like a loose kite in the in the chart. So like the wider part of the ch uh, kite would be here and then the tail would be over there. So um, and then, you know, the cross in the middle. But so and that that kite is headed towards Pisces, which is receptivity. Um, spirituality, compassion, um, uh, connecting to divine, um, letting go the ethereal realm, realm the, the higher realms. That brings me to another point. There's so much. <laughs> There's just so much. Um, over here we have Uranus and Jupiter, right? Uranus and Jupiter, they are, now I think it's it's like around Sunday. Sunday, they are going to like be like locked in together um, at 21 degrees. Um, and and the thing is, now, like I said before, just remember, it, 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 I think it's helpful to remember just to repeat that, you know, these two have been uh, working together, teaming up, uh, working as a team since like mid-March, uh, right? Now, the thing is, when they lock in, it'll be 21 degrees. Um, that 21 degrees, now there's a thing called Sabian symbols. And I think that was like channeled messages by somebody in like the 1930s or something like that. But for each degree of the uh, chart, there is some sort of message. And I, I find it very poetic and very interesting. And the, the, the message here is the white dove over troubled waters. Don't you think that's beautiful? I think that's beautiful. I think it's beautiful to hear white dove over trouble. Like when we think of white dove, it reminds me of peace, you know? And they're, you know, at least on a global level, on an earth, earth level, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of, um, yeah, let's just leave it at stress, right? And I have said before, when I think of your, now in the tarot, Uranus is the fool, okay? So um, going back to the fool, the fool you know, doesn't really care much for the consequences. And it's funny because like, you know, there's, there's, uh, some people have said that, you know, when you're bold, um, the universe favors the bold, which is Aries. So, um, and if you jump, the net will appear. Jumping in for the net to appear. That's the fool card. And so, yes, the Uranus. But I also think of Uranus, because it's the higher octave of Mars. So I also think of Uranus kind of like the tower card to me. So um, my point is, is that, you know, this stress, this... Um, and I think there was even an earthquake somewhere, like on the east coast of the U.S., you know, the shaking, the shake up, which shake up is a very Uranus type of thing too. So, um, so, but like I said, overall, this is positive. Um, we need to shake things up, um, in order for regrowth. Now that's brings me back to, um, Taurus because, Taurus is fertile ground. This, you know, if we went back to ancient times, right? Ancient times didn't have um, money, dollars the way we did. They had the soil. They had the earth, right? It, Aries would be the seed, okay? Aries is the seed. And Taurus is where you plow the earth. You plant. You're planting the seeds, and so Taurus is very patient because it knows it takes a lot of time to um, to make those seeds come to full growth and to um, produce fruits and vegetables, right? So here we have planting seeds, right? 
And now I have this line here between the sun and Pluto because as of now, we have a square, which is challenging. Okay, so meaning that the transformation is, is a little bit difficult. However, this sun is going to move uh, rather quickly compared to Uranus and Jupiter, right? It's going to... Now, what I also found was interesting. Remember what I... Uh, like, I... I I need to remind us that we also are in Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde has to do with um, any, any word that you can think of that is RE, whether it's reconnect, rethink, replan, read. And so I've been doing a lot of reading lately. <laughs> um, but so, and clearly some of the reading I've been doing is about astrology, so... But as, so what I found interesting was, is that um, uh, the sun, you know, we, th we know that Jupiter is a really big planet here, right? Jupiter is huge, but the sun is like 10 times bigger than Jupiter. So sun is really gigantic compared to all of the planets, right? So, um, and as the sun, now, as it appears in the sky, as it appears in the sky, the sun will appear to be crossing over this tor uh, Taurus section, and it'll move closer to Uranus and Jupiter. So, because um, Uranus and Jupiter appear to be slower moving, as this um, sun moves closer, it's going to um, it's going to amplify. It's going to charge up these two, this Uranus and Jupiter, which makes this um, good luck, this sudden change. Now, the thing with Uranus and Jupiter, it's also connected because Uranus is a ruler of Aquarius, and um, Jupiter was the ancient ruler of Pisces, but both of these planets have to do with knowledge, understanding, um, global view, big picture thinking. So there is some sort of knowledge. Uh, my feet are starting to bug me. Um, there is some sort of knowledge understanding, um, epiphany here that we will get in terms of uh, security and safety and, well, um, and so, you know, um, basic needs and that sort of thing. Or, you know, going back to your part of the chart, it could have something to do with like your um, partnership or your fun or your um, spirituality, that kind of stuff, based on where you have Taurus, right? Um, and, um, and so when, so as this, uh, I don't know, even know if I'm making any sense right now. <laughs> um, but actually, I had someone, um, I was looking, because like, you know, I, I keep a little bit of notes here. And someone said, you're reading all your stuff. I'm like, and, and so what? <laughs> What's the big deal? Anyway, not the, not the point. But um, uh, so um, where was I? Oh, in my brain. Okay. So as we go through Taurus season, yeah, it's a little bit difficult for the transformation. But as it moves closer, I think around like beginning of May, first week of May, second week of May, we'll have the sun close by and we'll have the moon. So that is our, the sun is our head and the moon, our hearts. It'll be a new moon, which is fabulous because it'll be in Taurus season and then they'll all be here um and helping this this uh, uh information um this understanding this um 
it could be good luck. It could be abundance. It could be um, uh, something even social. It could be like, you know, connecting on a social level, right? Um, but so, yeah. And um, what else was I trying to say? I can't remember. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, is there anything else? No, I think that's about it. <laughs> well, I mean, other than the fact that, you know, it's gonna, we still have all of this stuff here in Aries, right? I think I mentioned this in the beginning. We still have all of this stuff here. Mercury retrograde, I think Mercury retrograde ends around beginning of May, but we got two weeks after that. So I would give it to like at least the first week of May. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when, when the sun and all of that is here, the sun and the moon are here, then we'll have a trine, which is really positive. So, uh, I don't know what else. Oh, and it'll also make a really nice connection here with Mars and Saturn. Mars is the ruler of Aries, right? Because Mars is the ruler of Aries, that's important. Um, and so we're still being tested here in terms of, of, you know, how spiritual can we be? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but, you know, I think some of us are further along than others, which is great. And, um, you know, all, all we need to do is we just need to get to a critical mass. We need like enough people, um, you know, reaching for the stars, so to speak. I'm going to put this down. We need enough people reaching for the stars, so to speak, pun intended. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see a positivity. Oh, the other thing too I wanted to mention is that I was, you know, it's so interesting because I was listening to something and they were talking about how you know, you can start to see like there's a divergence. There's a divergence of of like one type of person and another type of person. Those that are more, um, yeah, what's the word I want to use? I don't know. Let's just use spiritual. And then those are that are like, you know, the, the, there's a 3D type of person and then there's like a 4D, 5D type of person. And and it's interesting, you know, how how we can see that even to like maybe in, in our own family or, you know, with friends or groups or that sort of thing. But it could get to the point where it's it's physically it's going to even look differently, you know, and um, and also it might like one group of people might become hard to see to the other group. In other words, like the the ones that are on a higher level of evolution might be hard to see to will will not be able to be um will not be as visible to the to the 3D type of group. I'm just rambling at this point. Let me just stop. <laughs> um okay. Uh I tried. Darn it, I tried. Um, thank you for hanging out. And if you like, comment, uh, subscribe, I appreciate that too. Thank you. It, it, it all means so much. You know that. Um, but I'll just keep repeating it and I'll just keep saying thank you. Okay, take care. Bye.